Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and this new tutorial on PyTorch. So in previous videos, we learned about the self potential like one of the main component in transformer model. In this video, we will learn another very crucial component position embedding. So let us dive in like, uh, first of all, look at uh, what it is and why do we need it. So position and order defines the grammar and semantics of a sentence, like especially in text processing. So if we have a, a sentence, let us say uh, we are learning position embedding. So the position of each tokens uh, is quite crucial to understand the whole sentence. If you look at RNN and its variants, they inherently uh, accounts for the positions like uh, each and every token is passed sequentially and the information is uh, uh, encoded in the representation. But in transformer model, uh, there is no means of capturing positional information because each word flows simultaneously through the transformer model. So as we have seen, like uh, each word uh, generates query key and value matrices, they are kind of gone through a linear transformation and there is no uh, means of, uh, there is no information about positions when we get the key and uh, query and value matrices. So a possible solution is to add a piece of information to each word about its position. And that's what we call position embedding. So in general, what we do is we uh, add or uh, simply sum the word embeddings with uh, uh, another position embeddings, which actually uh, inherit the position uh, representation. And the most important uh, property of this position embedding is like when it goes through the linear transformation, it is kind of uh, it, it keeps the uh, relative position uh, information. So it is really very important to uh, have this property like when it is uh, going through a linear transformation, it should have the properties like uh, the, relative, the relative position should uh, be consistent. Okay, so we will see with example like what does that mean? So the simplest solution of position embeddings is just count. Like we simply add a corresponding count. For example, the word embedding uh, for A0 represents the word embedding for W0. And we simply add the zeroth position to it. The problem is uh, like large values of positional embeddings dominates the original word, em word embedding. So if simply I will add the, the uh, word embedding with these uh, large values, for example, if it is the length of 500, it will be the main component. Like if you look at the actual word embedding, they will be like in between very near to zero. And if you add something like 500, that will be the main component then. And, and at the end, uh, it will distort the word embedding. So another, uh, another solution to that particular uh, large values problem is to normalize it. Okay. So we simply divide the uh, divide the positions with the length like here we can say it is a uh, so if we have length 8 so it is like uh, 0 by 8 1 by 8 2 by 8 and so on that's what we get as a as a representation and now the problem of large values is solved but uh, it is no longer valid for arbitrary sequence length why so the problem is like uh, here if uh, here we are getting a6 as 0 0.86 but if it is length of 10 it will be different uh, for uh, a6 or the seventh position or if we uh, say it other way around the 0 0.86 in this case where the sequence length is 8 would be totally different than that for sequence length 10 okay so it is like it will change so what it should be like for a particular position, it should be consistent invariant to the length. Like if the length is 100, the A6 position should be the same as if it is for length 8 or 10 and so on. And that's where this uh, frequency based uh, approach works best. And that's kind of quite a genius technique which was proposed in the paper. We won't go much in details like in mathematics, but we will try to uh, understand like how it solves the previous problem that we have seen in previous two basic approaches. So the, the, the formula is this where the position is the position of uh, like which position we are trying to encode. D is the size of the embedding and should be equal to dimension of the existing embeddings. And here I is indices of each of the positional embeddings dimension 
also denoted the frequency. So I is equal to zero is the highest frequency. So it will be like full uh, cycle when we go from zero to one. Okay. So how do we actually compute the position embedding? So what we do is, so we simply plot the sine graph for this uh, value, which is position upon 10,000 to the power 2i divided by d, where we have seen like what is position and what is i and what is d. d is simply like the embedding size, which is the model size we have seen in the previous video. And i is the frequency. So let us say we are plotting for i is equal to 0. And uh, if i is equal to 0, it will be like very oscillating. It will be like very um, oscillating uh, curve. And what we do is to get the get the position embedding is we use the height to generate the work position. So in this case, this is like uh, P0, okay, which is like uh, position embedding for the zeroth word and so on. Now the main uh, crucial point to note here is like P0 and P6 are exactly same because the height will be same for P0 and P6. And uh, uh, this is not uh, uh, viable, like it should be like different. So for each and every position, the position embedding should be different, okay? So how do we solve it? So what we do is we simply uh, simply use uh, more than one i are the frequency. So instead of using just one, we use uh, multiple i's so that the, the, the curve would be different and uh, it will somehow differ with uh, like P0 and P6. Okay, let us see like how it looks like. So if you look at here, P0 is for i is equal to 0, 2, and 4. Here, this looks like this. And uh, P6 is now, you can see it is kind of different because uh, i is equal to 2 and i is equal to 0 is kind of different value. Okay, so this is uh, why we need to use multiple i's. Okay. And now let us look at like why do we need uh, both sine and cosine because we can see here like uh, um, P0 and P6 are kind of quite uh, discriminative even if we use just sine. So in previous videos we have seen like the input vector goes to a linear transformation to generate key, query and value matrices. And if the position embedding is uh, kind of uh, not in a way like when it goes through the linear transformation, it is not translated the same way it was in the raw input itself. It won't have the meaning or it won't preserve the positional uh, information in a sense. So uh, it is crucial that the position embeddings of V and learn are translated when linear transformation is applied to generate the query and key matrices. So that query and key are aligned and match perfectly. If they are kind of uh, the position embedding is not translated well, it, it won't uh, be uh, important like the position of uh, learn and v, uh, they won't be consistent with the actual draw embedding that we have passed through. So using both sine and cosine makes this translation easy. Like uh, they will be consistent in raw form as well as when we apply the uh, uh, linear transformation on these uh, embeddings to generate query and key matrices and when we apply the dot product to get the importance of each and every uh, position it will say like uh, position 0 is important with position uh, 4 in this case okay so I hope that is clear if you have queries ask in the comment section I will try to elaborate further and uh, the final thoughts is like uh, in general uh, we simply sum the word embeddings with uh, uh, position embeddings so it could be concatenated as well but uh, uh, the point is like it will aid up the model size like if we have say 512 embedding size and if we have 512 position embedding as well that's so the model size would be like uh, uh, 1024 in that sense it will increase the model size and uh, in experiments are in general we will see like uh, when we generate the position embeddings they are not like all the positions are all the 512 dimensions are required to represent the positions like only initial few are required to represent the embedding so it is important or uh, it is uh, uh, it is uh, more optimal to sum them up 
and in general like the word embeddings are, uh, are trained with the model training so it will simply uh, leave the initial part of the actual embeddings in the word embedding representation to be used as a position embedding so we will uh, see it in more detail in the next video when we uh, visualize it so it will be much more clear Another question uh, that one may ask is like uh, when it is uh, reaching to the upper layers, it might get to binary stage. The, the information that we encoded through position embedding that may not be present. But the good part with transformer model is the uh, it, the skip connections. Like they are there are residual connections that goes from one layer to the next layer, so the information is uh, preserved in that sense. So I I hope that is clear why we. Uh, uh, sum instead of uh, concatenation and uh, how it is not uh, uh, vanished in, in, in the deeper layer in the transformer model. So I hope uh, it should be clear now. Um, in the next video, we will implement and visualize the position embeddings and see like uh, how, how, it, uh, it is, uh, how it looks like in general. Okay. So thanks for watching. Bye for now. Take care. See you in the next.